Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Mac OS Server. And we're going to look at the accounts area here uh, of Server. Now, in a previous screencast, I showed you how to set up an open directory. Uh, the open directory will be important if you want to use network accounts. And I'm going to tell you the difference between those. But just wanted to make sure that if you were looking at using uh, accounts where you would have users sign in for services and that sort of thing, you do need an open directory set up. And so you'll want to go back and look at that screencast before looking at this one. Now, as we look here in the sidebar, well, I want to cover just a couple of the different user types that we've got here. You can see this is the user pane. And if I just hit this drop down here, you'll notice I have the option of viewing all users, local users, and then local network users. So let me just tell you the difference between those. Uh, a local user would be a user account that is Mac specific. So that would be an account that is on the local machine that you're working on. Um, and that would only really be effective on that machine. Now, in many uh, cases, you can set up these local users to have access to services and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, a local user is attached to that particular Mac. Now, a local network user would be a user that could access uh, services through the network. And so uh, this would be where you would have people for remote services uh, that you would want to manage. You know, if they wanted to access calendar or contacts or something like that remotely, or if you wanted to have these users uh, sign into any Mac in your network and have their account uh, and information come up, then the local network user would be the one that you would want to set up. So I just wanted to make a designation between those because it's important to understand how that works. So here I am in the local network user area because uh, that's what I want to show you. And you'll notice down here I've got uh, this plus and minus that's grayed out. I've got this padlock here. And then I've got this uh, area here where it doesn't let me do anything except for import or export users. And that's because this uh, area is locked. If I just hit the padlock here, you'll notice I get this drop down that's going to ask for my administrator name and password. And it's for the uh, open directory. And so let me just go ahead and put in that information here. And once I have that information in here, I just hit Authenticate. And so now it's authenticated against my open directory. So again, what I used to open that padlock was my open directory password. So it would be that DIR admin password that we had set up before when we set up our open directory. Because that's where these network accounts are going to be stored is inside that uh, open directory. Okay, so now that I've got that, I have the option now where I can add users if I want. You'll notice here now I've got this drop down that allows me to set up a bunch of different things. So let me just go ahead and add a user to show you what that looks like. If I hit the plus here, you can see that I get this new user page. And I can determine what type of directory I want to put this in. Do I want to put it as a local directory or network directory? Like I said, local would be to this Mac. It will create home folders and everything on the Mac itself. Or a local network directory, uh, which is um, the option to have this user go outside um, my particular Mac that I'm using. So I'm just going to put in a full name. So let me just make one up here. We're going to say John Doe. And it gives me an account name. I can change that account name to something else if I want to. If I just want it to be, let's say, J. Doe, I could do that as well. Now in here, I put uh, email addresses. And so I can put whatever email addresses I want to put in here. Now, if you're running the mail service on the server, you could put that information in here. Or you could put an actual email for Joe that's outside of that. It's up to you. Uh, it's not mandatory, but you can put that in there. Then I need to add a password in here. And you can see I've got the little password key lock here. And if I just click that little key, I want you to notice that it does uh, bring up a password assistant that helps me create uh, passwords that are random. And so I can just uh, see if I do that, see how it kind of fills it in for me already. So that's kind of a nice way to do it. It can make it memorable, letters and numbers only, uh, random, that sort of thing. Or I can even put it in manually. And if I change it to manual, then I would put information in there. And what's nice is it will actually show me uh, the quality uh, of, the, of the password that I put in. So if I just put one in here, let's go ahead and See, if I start typing that information in there, it gives me a suggestion. Let's just type a bunch of random numbers. And see how the bar kind of goes up and tells me the strength of it when I put it in there. So again, it's just kind of a nice tool that uh, helps you with setting up a password. I'm just going to uh, click off of this and don't want to do that. I'm just going to put in something I'll remember.
Okay, so now that I've got that in there, that's all set. Now I can choose to allow to administer the server or not, and this would make John Doe um, an administrator of the server. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to leave that blank. And now I can determine where what I want to do with his home folders. Now you notice I can say local only, which means that it will set up local home folders here on the server, or I can determine none services only. So that basically this would mean that John Doe would just have access to services. He wouldn't need his home folders on the server. Now in most cases you're going to do none services only unless you want to put the home folders on the server and have them log into other Macs on the network. And I'm going to show you how to do that in another screencast. Uh, but for our purposes here we're just going to go none services only. You notice how things disappear, right? If I go back to local only, you can see I can set a limit on their disk usage for their home folder so it doesn't take up too much space on my server. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to go services only. If I wanted to, I could put in some keywords that might help me search a little quicker for different users. So if you've got a ton of users you're putting in here, you might put in keywords, um, you know, like you could put them departments or different things like that so that you could find them. And then any notes on this user. Uh, I'm just going to leave those blank and just say create. And so it's going to create this user John Doe. And so here you can see John Doe. There's his name. Here's his short name for his account. Uh, and all of that. I don't have any uh, keywords or anything put in there, so that's fine. And so there's my John Doe user. And if I ever wanted to edit him, uh, I could just double click and it would take me back into the window that I was in. And you can see I've got allowing the user to log in or administer the server. And I want you to notice what it did. You can see that it added this group area here called work group. Now I'm going to talk about groups in a minute, but the work group group is an automatic group that's set up and it's set up for uh, any of your new users and it's kind of a catch-all group. You can add other groups in here as well but it's just a catch-all group uh, for all new users that are created. So I'll say cancel and leave that alone. Alright now if I select John I can also come in here to this drop down and now I can edit user which is the same thing as double clicking. I can edit his access to services and this is important. Let me just click on this. What this does is it allows me to say which services John can have access to. So maybe I don't want uh, John to use SSH. So if I uncheck that, now he won't have access to that service. So anything that's checked, he can have access to. Anything that's unchecked, he does not get access to. So let's say I just want to get rid of screen sharing maybe. Um, and uh, let's say I don't, I don't need him to use FTP. So I'm just going to check those. So if you ever have a user that has trouble getting into a service, you want to come in here and just see if they are um, uh, the box is checked for that service in here. Otherwise, they won't get access. So I'm just going to say OK, and it's going to update that. Now, if I come back down here, I can edit e I can edit mail options. If I click on that, uh, you can see what, what what I would do with his mail, whether I'm going to store it locally or just forward it to him. And I can limit his mail to a certain size. Now, this is if I'm hosting a mail server. If I'm ru actually running the mail service here, I can set these things per user so that I make sure I'm not taking up too much space. It's going to cancel that for a minute. So I can change his password in here. So if John forgets his password, I can come into the Change Password dialog and create a new one right here for him. And then he'll be able to access the server. Uh, so I can help users out who have problems with their passwords. Now I can also create a template from this user. If I just say Create Template, you can see it brings this down. And so all of the different things for this particular user would be a template. And then I can create new users from template later if I wanted to do that. And I can even do things where the uh, login shell is. Uh, all of this different information that's here. I'm going to cancel that. I uh, just wanted to show you that because I can edit templates as if I have them and then I can edit my password policy. Let me just click on that. So I can set up for my users what I want the password policy to be. Maybe I, after so many attempts I want to disable their login so they can't get in. So in case I'm trying to protect against a forced attack. Or, or I can say passwords have to differ from their account name, contain at least one letter, a numeric. And so in here I can set all the specifics of what these passwords need to be so that users, uh, if they ever do change their passwords or whatever, would have to have all of these different things in effect. So this is my password policy then for my directory. I'm just going to cancel that. So it does give you the option of doing that. And then I can import users or export users. And so if I export uh, my users, it'll create a document that I can then use later to import. And uh, that comes in really handy if you've got to destroy your open directory, but you don't want to use, lose all your users. You just export them, destroy the open directory, recreate it, and then you can import all of your users and their information back into the system. So that gives you an idea of how the uh, users work and the difference between them. Let's go ahead and go over here and take a look at groups for a minute. 
Now, this is a great way to be able to manage uh, different users, and that's using groups. So that instead of creating, um, you know, different in different things for different people, I can manage them through the group area. If you look here, I can show all groups, local groups, or net local network groups, the same that we have with our. Uh, users here in terms of those accounts. You can see here I've got my work group uh, group that's created. It has a short name as well just like it has for the user. It tells me I've got two users and I can tell that it's a local network directory group. Uh, the same thing applies if I double click on it. It opens up the screen here for me to edit. Now what I can do is set up mailing lists if I want to do that. If I'm running the mail server I can set up mail lists for the group like work group at you know server.example.com or something like that and I can allow mail from non-group users if I want or I can set that up to only be a mailing list just for users in this work group that have been assigned to it. So that's a nice uh, way that you can manage those things. Uh, I can say give this group a shared folder and that will create a folder on the server for the work group that will allow users to access it and so then anybody in the work group would be able to access that folder. I can also make these group members messages buddies so that once I set up the messages service then anybody who is in this particular group will become buddies of mine. I can uh, import them into my messages app so that I can talk with them quickly uh, back and forth. Now you notice here I can create a group wiki here. That's if I have the wiki service functional which I don't right now but I'll show you that in a future screencast. And then I can add members in here as well just by clicking the plus or I can take members out of this work group. And then of course the keywords and notes. So that's what a group looks like when you set it up. I'm going to say cancel here. Uh, now with this group I can come down here. I can edit the group. I can edit access to services. Now just like I had with uh, John Doe I can edit access to services for this work group. And you notice it just carried over the uh, information that I set up for John Doe because it set this group up once I created my first network account. So I can uh, add or subtract services that I want a particular group to have access to and it will affect everybody in that group. Let's cancel that. And then of course I can import and export groups just like I did, could with my users and groups and I would do the same thing like I told you before if I destroyed the open directory of importing and exporting those groups. So that gives you an idea of how the users and groups work. Again, with these network accounts, I do need to have open directory set up and ready to go. And now that you've got an understanding of how these works work, we'll start to set up some of the uh, things that we need for file sharing, which will then allow us to set up home folders on the server that users can access from any machine on your network. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.